Most of the shoots for On The Water TV are planned out months in advance. But every year, we leave a shoot or two open for those unpredictable, can't miss fishing opportunities that pop up on short notice. Last summer, surprising numbers of king mackerel showed up off of the south side of Cape Cod. These fish are a rare visitor to northern waters, and for whatever reason, they became abundant in 2018. So we contacted Captain Terry Nugent to get us in on the action. When I joined up with him at Hyannis Marina, I was hopeful to land just a single king. Neither one of us could have expected what was about to take place. What I find is they, they kind of run a circuit. So you'll see them jumping kind of randomly and you'll see one or two jump near you and that's when you're going to get your bites and then you kind of keep working it you won't get bit and then they kind of it's like on a five to ten minute cycle they just kind of keep working the kind edge of like the alleys do similar yep very similar um we're using gear that's a lot different than most people would expect 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon okay no wire whatsoever yep. those long lipped type lures sp minnows x raps yep. you know, yozuris etc this would not be the first time we targeted King Mackerel for an episode of On the Water TV. In our very first season, Neil Larson and I trolled up a mix of Benito and King Mackerel in Buzzards Bay during an exceptionally warm summer. That's what I'm talking about. All right, who was in charge of bringing the net? Boys, nice fish. Yeah, look wow. at that. Nice fish, Neil. Congratulations. Wow. Just a cool, cool looking fish. All right, we're out here with Captain Terry Nugent of Riptide Charters uh, off of Hyannis on the south side of Cape Cod. And we're targeting king mackerel, which generally you think of king mackerel, you think of Florida, you think of North Carolina. Uh, it's pretty unusual for us to get decent numbers of them, and Cape Cod is about as far north as they range. They're probably averaging five to six to seven pounds. Kingfish can get upwards of 90 pounds, so these are relatively babies, but nonetheless, it's just kind of cool to have unique summer visitor. They're like the tourists that come to Cape Cod, and they're up here for all the good seafood we got, and they're pigging out. So long, fast retrieve. No real action to it other than what the lure puts in. If you get one, just kind of hang on. The place to ourselves, which is always nice. It is. You know, weekdays, it, it's a, you know, afternoon kind of tidal. Oh, one broke out there. See him? See the white water? Probably 150 yards off the transom. Okay, that bodes well. Game on. It's tough to see them because, you know, it's a single jump. You're not getting a feed per se. Big wolf packs. Like yeah, you see you're, you're just getting a single come launching onesies, out of the water. Twosies. They said, we're in, we're in 13 feet of water, but you're casting into, that cast is probably in 22 feet of water. So it's a fairly pronounced drop off. So they're here. That night of northeast wind hadn't blown them out yet. There, look at them, another one. Just about, oh, yep. got him. There got it is, him. there it is. <laughs> Got him. That's one right there. Look at the head shake on the rod. Yeah, nicely done, Terry. Does it feel like one? Yeah. Okay. yeah. They're, they're real erratic. They're fast and they head shake like crazy. What lure is that that you have on there, Terry? Oh, there he goes. He's not done. Uh, this was the Yozuri. Come on, buddy. This side. Such cool looking fish, especially when you see them in the water like that. With that real iridescent shine to them, real silvery. He's a big one. Hang on, let's let him circle around again here. Oh, oh, and away you go. Let's see if we can get some more. And they do indeed like chartreuse. They do. We got that going for us. He was a chubby little guy. That was a good one. No. Oh, there we go. There we go. This could just be a, oh, no, no, that's something real. Didn't do much at first. Yeah, it's just a little oh. rat loop. False alarm. I only got one of those yesterday. That's been interesting in here. There's really been no bluefish around. The curse of the bluefish. Got me all excited, Andy. I, I know. I thought it was a blue at first, and then it kind of just charged the boat. Another one. Get this thing in. There, there we go. There you go. 
This feels more like it. Nice, nicely done. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah, it's a little more like what we're aiming for here. Second king mackerel we've had to the boat so far. I've only been down here about an hour or so. Had a couple other shots, one break Ooh, off. Nice, he didn't like the boat at all. No, he doesn't like me or you. It's a nice boat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is pretty incredible that we've been able to kind of dial these things in. And uh, oh, there you know, there you know. He's like really good sized dude. Caught fish. Come here, baby. Come on. They're slippery as they are slimy hell. fish. Got the tail. Got him. I've been fishing on Cape Cod for like 20 years now. I think this is maybe the fifth or sixth one I've seen. You know, it's pretty incredible. We don't get these every year, but an incredible fish. A nice unique summer visitor to Cape Cod. There we go. We want to release him. Yeah, we're going to let this guy go. You can't eat these. Ah. They're, they're not great. You know, I think they're similar to like a bluefish would be. It's a very oily flesh. They're fairly good for smoking. And away he goes. When you find piles of birds, you know, they're not necessarily working the fish. They're working the bait balls. And if you can find a real good bait ball on a drop off where you've seen some jumpers, the bird, oh, right there, big jump way out there. The birds will key you to the bait ball and the fish will focus on that bait ball. It's not like albies and blues and bass where you can chase the birds around. We try to work the contours and the depths. We use the bathymetric chart on the plotter so we can fine tune where we want to be. See some birds, know they're on bait and use the trolling motor to just kind of hop from spot to spot. You know, we had a couple of times we were within 150 feet of the fish, couldn't quite reach them. So you just let the trolling motor bring you over and cut that distance down. And of course, Jimmy got tight, or uh, Andy got tight. Oop, there we go. Woo! <laughs> Another one. Andy's got the hot hand. Maybe I'll just be the guide. Couldn't have been more than two, three minutes since we picked up that last one. Obviously, Terry's got to set up right in the right spot. We've seen fish breaking right around us. He's got the trolling motor down, which is kind of holding us right in place. And we've just been here blind casting to him. It seemed to like chartreuse. Getting most Another of his fish one. on that. Look at that. Nice, beautiful fish. Nice job, man. You got the hot hand. I don't think he's done yet. Leave me, uh, leave me about the length of the rod. Outside the rod okay. holder there. He wants to be on this side. They're not the easiest things to grab. That's right, they, they have this thing they call a net. Ah. <laughs> We're only using 12 fluoro, so there we go. Oh, he made you work for that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you you want to do the plier, yeah. plier work yeah, for me? Right there? Right here. Well, thank you for the bath. Shower. <laughs> They yeah, always, is... always get hooked on that front hook. Yeah, you were saying that earlier. Yeah, That's interesting always. That... And you see on his cheek, there's a little little mark on his cheek. That's from the back hook. And you look at the teeth on these things, and they are just absolute razor blades. And they have a slime on them like you can't believe. So when you grab them, they go nuts on you. Oh. All right. Let's get another one. Oh, we'll take another, what, three casts? There you go, brother. <laughs> oh, another one jumped. You know, I knew these always got caught. You know, guys that trolled suck and nest it or hedge fence, you know, for bluefish in the heat of the summer. This was a, you know, you'd hear of one or two or three a year kind yeah. of annual bycatch, if you will. Nothing that ever made me want to go out and try to target and them. And go target them like this. I kind of got wind. One of my buddies works at Falmouth Bait and Tackle. And they said, hey man, you know, there's been some kings around over in your neck of the woods. So I got what little info I, you know, that they could give me. There wasn't a lot to share. And uh, myself and two or three other boats went out and uh, 
got in the area, started kind of figuring it out. And once we figured that out, it died. Yeah. <laughs> we finally felt like we had a handle on it for a couple of days and it stopped. And then uh, I saw a couple more started getting caught and it seemed like they were out in the shoals where you would expect to see them. And then I saw a kid with a kayak on one of the forums had a couple and he had gone back and forth with me a couple of times uh, in the past. We started watching and when the tide was going the other way, even though it was afternoon, there were no fish here. We kind of determined based on that, that it was less a time bite and more of an incoming tide bite that just happened to coincide. Oh, there he is. That's one. Thank you. Here I am chattering away. Kind of wasn't expecting that. You ready to get slimy? I'll do my best. <laughs> Still not as big as yours. Look at that run. I love that sound, don't you? He's not done yet. I think the only thing that's in him right now, I think that front hook came out of his mouth. Yeah. I think that back hook's kind of on snagged in the side I, of the head. I think. Looks like he's hooked pretty solid. Okay. Actually, he's not hooked that solid. I think there's only one hook in his face. So I'll circle him around to you and just grab him by the tail like a, there we go. Oh, he's a chubby bugger, isn't he? Nice, thanks man. We've been out here about an hour and a half, two hours, yeah. and I've seen more of these fish than I've seen in 20 years fishing here in Cape Cod. Pretty, pretty That's fantastic. Whoa. remarkable that uh, you can actually come out here and target them. Yeah. Yep, there he goes. Nice job. All summer long, as we received reports of king mackerel being caught around Cape Cod, we noticed a trend when we compared the reports to the sea surface temperature maps. The king mackerel were congregating in the areas with the highest water temperatures. Anywhere the water was above 76 degrees, you had a fair chance at hooking a Cape Cod king. Terry, these setups are perfect for this. It's uh, nice and light, very sensitive rods, and uh, you know, only using what, 12 pound fluoro for the yep. leader? We're, um, we're essentially using a Bonito setup. It's a uh, seven foot Shimano Terramar rod, basically light action that you'd use for Bonito and Albies. Uh, little Stratic CI4 4000 class. Yep. Uh, I've got them spooled up with 20 braid, and we're only using 12 and fi sometimes 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, what I'm finding is, we haven't had but one break off earlier today. The lure is long enough and the fish are small enough that they can't take the whole lure. They're hitting it sideways. So they're coming in and they're typically getting that middle hook or the front hook in their mouth and they're nowhere near where the line is. So we've been pretty lucky. So essentially what we've been able to do when we start seeing them is just clip the epoxy jigs or the yeah. metal off of our Bonito rods. Yeah, anything too small, they probably Ex suck right in. And exactly. Touch it off. So there's really no change needed in the gear other than to, you know, throw one of these longer lipped baits, whether it be a SP Minnow, Yozuri, X Wrap, yep. anything with the chartreuse back on it. See it? Another one. Another one. Tight. They thought they could hide. Nice, Terry. There he is up on the surface. Oh, right in front of us, one just skied. Right there, right Andy, there. cast. Don't worry about me. Ah. You insist. Yeah, cast, don't worry about me. I gotta work to the back here, he's coming underneath. Got him, Tight. doubled up. Nice, wow. dude. Nice. <laughs> it's worth the fist oh, bump. Oh, that's awesome. I might have a rat blue, actually. Look at that. He's... Nope, you got no, a king. I got a king. He's just coming you right at king. us. Double kings. <laughs> oh, mine's gone. Okay. If you can grab this one quick, we'll uh, do an expedient release on him. 
double kingfish. That's awesome. Let him go, let him go, let him go. We made a little move and all of a sudden they were just popping out of the water like popcorn all around us. There must have been 20 jumped in two minutes. Pop him up a little bit. Like I said, it's only 12, so. Oh, another jump right there. Hey, nice boy. job, buddy. Okay. Beautiful nice. fish. Cape Cod Kingfish right here. Five for six? Yeah. Or yeah. Six for seven now. Okay. Okay, and away he goes. Thanks, man. Hey, I got no problem with those quick releases. No, I'm just gonna let him go anyway. <laughs> Huge jumpers out there. Uh, we're not leaving. <laughs> I'm okay with that. You can call your wife or whatever you gotta do, but we're not leaving. I don't have time for that right now. Oh, 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 oh you see the bait? There. Get him. There he is. Nice, Terry. Ah, oh. Pulled the hook. Yeah, I know it. Chased it right to the boat. Oh, 12. Got him. Right there, look at him, right under the surface. The nice sun one. hitting him just yeah, right. Yeah, beautiful when that light catches him just oh, right. Was. <laughs> you want this side, Andy? Okay. okay. You gotta drop him, drop him. Let him go. Gotta be, gotta be a better way. <laughs> they are wicked slimy. Oh, try the other hand. Try these sliming? <laughs> I think I get all the slime off. There you go. That's a nice one. With this light, can we grab a picture of him? As the afternoon went on, the fishing just kept getting better. King Mackerel took to the sky all around the boat, and the action got intense. We found the mother load here, Terry. <laughs> okay, this guy hit right behind the back of the boat. Look at that. Yeah, Terry, they, they have this thing they call a net. Ah. Ah. What would you say the water temperature is right now, Terry? It's up close to 80? High 70s to just over 80, depending on time of day, depth of the water. But uh, we're, we're, we're tickling 80 almost every, oh, there he is. There it is, nice work, Terry. And it looks like Jimmy might have just hooked up out in front of us. And right now it's late August, and this is typically when we see our warmest water temperatures of the year. No, the blue no fish. good. This is a not so non-typical visitor. Darn it. We've got over a dozen in the boat, and I just want one more, <laughs> you know? We'll be out here oh. all night. Oh. Okay, oh. Well, that, they, well, they, that yeah. hit a little bit harder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the call and say, this is a kingfish. Yep. Okay. I can tell just by the way he's racing across the bow. So I asked for one more. You have to ask. Typically, you get what you want. I'd like one more, too, please. There he is. That's a nice one. Ah! Quick release. Oh, that was close to one more. You said you didn't have to get slimed up. That's it. Let's see if there's one more in the mix. I really feel like this trolling motor has helped us immensely today. Yeah, it's nice just being able to lock that in and just sit in one spot and 
so you really don't have time to be tossing an anchor out yeah. and trying to get it set. And, and they're moving too fast to try and chase them down. Right. Drifting doesn't keep you in the zone long enough. And uh, we don't have to play around with the gas engine, spooking them and making a lot of noise. Just saw a couple more jumpers. That, those might be bluefish in there. But yeah, it allows us to, oh, kingfish. <laughs> <laughs> I was just cranking it in because I was worried the trolling motor was Come right gonna... up to the bow, come around, the... come around, come around, come around. <laughs> do the dance, do the dance. Nice. I was ripping that absolutely as fast as I could. See, I told you, the trolling motor helps. <laughs> Apparently you can crank as fast as you can and we'll still be able to catch up with it. He's not quite ready. It's like that greased pole thing. These things are so slippery. It's not like tailing an albi or a bone. Yeah, they, they're like greased pigs. Stop it. Oh, another successful capture. <laughs> yeah, these look actually look a lot like a Spanish mackerel. There's the been some confusion. I know the state record Spanish mackerel is over eight pounds, probably was a king mackerel. I, I would agree. But the way to differentiate is you can see the lateral line takes a real deep cut down, whereas on a Spanish mackerel, it's a subtle it's a, one. More of a subtle. And the other thing line. is, if you look on a Spanish, right up here, this little bit of dorsal fin typically has black on it. Yep. it it's a fairly deep, pronounced black, where this one's pretty much the same color as the fish. Those two are generally pretty good indicators. Absolutely okay. incredible, Terry. This has Did, been absolutely epic. Like you said, it's been nuclear, just fish skying out of the water. This has got to be our eighth or ninth or tenth fish. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a good day, and when it slowed down, we moved to a little different spot, and all of a sudden, the water just started erupting. These things were coming out of the water. I've never seen left. anything like it. Anyway, we're going to put him back in the water here, and away we go.